Well, hello world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, you tuning in from well, wherever you are. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And we'd like to thank you for tuning in to The Future is Simple, where we're going to launch the CRE, something that we are very excited about. It's something that we feel we have in store for you. And before we go into what the CRE actually is, sneak preview, it is for successfully using and providing security standards. We like to go into what problem we want to solve with the CRE. Security is not simple. That's actually the problem that we, that we are providing a solution for. If you look at the report of the European Cybersecurity Organization from 2018, uh, this is sort of a zoomed out version of it. You can see it has 200 pages of cybersecurity standards, standards that overlap, standards that have gaps, standards that have different focus. And the conclusion from that report, and that's also the consensus, it's fragmented, this standard landscape. It's complex, it's confusing. So if you're an engineer or a tester, or if you want to procure software, it's hard to select and find appropriate information in these standards. And for standard makers, it's, it's practically impossible to link to other relevant work and keep that up to date. And the result is that standards tend to cover everything instead of focusing on their added value and link to other work. And this creates unnecessary effort and the risk of inconsistencies and incompleteness. One of the issues that we see a lot is somebody wrote a standard, it's either for a country or a specific industry or a specific industry in a country or a specific sort of device, and they link to other resources. It's a good idea, but these resources change, they get newer versions, they get moved, they get canceled even, and people click on it and they get a 404 error. This is not good. Spiros. Earth calling Spiros. We are not getting your sound. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Sorry for that. So the same mistake happens even with the WASP. Uh, we have a lot of projects, a lot of standards, a lot of documentation, which is not together in one unified way. Um, as a start for this project, we sat down and tried to map uh, all our all OWASP projects of uh, a certain level onto an SDLC. We called it the application uh, Wayfinder, and you can find it online. It's on our uh, OWASP wiki page. But even that, uh, we had a lot of trouble digging through links or uh, just linking between things. Rob, back to you. Yes. And this problem was also identified by ENISA, this ENISA report, Advancing Software Security in the EU, says that requirements largely overlap. And this demonstrates that software security is mainly a generic problem that both standards developing organizations and standards organizations or, or good practice producers, they're often working without proper coordination and effective liaisons. And one of the recommendations in this report is uh, develop a common repository for shared security measures. Spoiler, this is the CRE. And the goal is to align on requirement commonalities across different schemes, across different scanners, so, so that you can prevent proliferation and fragmentation, while also making drafting and maintaining a scheme more efficient in terms of mitigating the risk. And we set out to try and solve this, to create this repository. Let's look at it. Security standards and guidelines, they are connect, connected really at the requirement level. So if, for example, you have an entry in the OWASP ASVS, it's a large list of security verification checks, 
Um, and here's a specific one, 402. It says, verify that regulated private data is stored encrypted. Well, you can find more information about encryption in this NIST publication, 53, and also more information about personal data. And in the OWASP Web Service Testing Guide, uh, you can find more information on how to test this. If we could somehow connect everything, things would become easier to find, clearer, more consistent, and more complete. But how? So we looked into this problem. And we saw one major problem to start with, and everybody runs into this. So mapping everything to everything is too much work and unmaintainable. We have here four standards, and if you map everything that's related to everything else, it's just way too much work. And this is just for four standards. Imagine if you want to do this for, for, for 20. And demonstration of this is an initiative of IoT security mapping.uk. They mapped IoT security standards from about 100 sources, and the result is a gigantic graph, a thousand pages of JSON specification, quite a useful effort. It provides a lot of insight at that moment, but extremely hard to maintain. Once that one of these standards gets updated, maybe the, the, the entries get shoveled around, suddenly it's out of date and you need to update it. So imagine doing this for all security topics. So we thought about this and we came up with a solution. Why not link to shared topics? Instead of linking to all the other standards, you link to topics that you share. And by doing so, if the MACS links to this topic and the KPAC links this entry to the same topic, they are basically interrelated, but they don't have to specify this. So this makes linking a lot easier than having to link to all these, these, these different resources. This is an example. So we have here the four standards. We have specific entries of these standards. They have links, read more, and they link to this topic session token generation. And you may notice that this topic has a six digit number. This is what we call the CRE ID. So the CRE contains many topics that are interrelated and every topic has a unique six digit number. And if you link to that number, you link to that topic. More on that later. There's another problem. If you've made a standard, and you want to link to topics, there is a large set of topics. And especially if you look at it from the granularity at the detail level that you see in the ASVS, it's just an enormous list of hundreds of topics. And standards may not really uh, have a lot of fun going through all these topics and see how they link. And in many cases, standards are about more higher level topics such as uh, personal data or uh, cryptography or uh, specific aspects that are, are at a higher level. So instead of having to go through all these detailed topics, we introduce higher level topics such as cryptography, making it much e easier for standards to link to those. And by doing so, they indirectly link to the detailed topics because those have relations with those higher level topics. For which we have an example here that is uh, that Spiros will uh, discuss. Thank you, Rob. So as an example, um, say that you have ASVS 611, Encrypt Regulated Personal Data at Rest, which links to the topic Encrypt Personal Data at Rest, which is pretty intuitive. That topic by itself links to two other CREs, um, 275483, Securely Store Regulated Data, and Personal Data Handling, which again is pretty intuitive, makes sense. Personal Data Handling can link to the relevant NIST version, uh, NIST topic, and also Securely Store Regulated Data can 
link to the encrypt data at rest CRE because you would need encryption at some point if you want to securely store regulated data. And CRE 504340, encrypt data at rest, links to CWE 311, missing encryption of sensitive data, which again is a relevant uh, standard. As well, if you want to encrypt data at rest, at some point you will need some cryptography, which makes sense. So that should link to the cryptography CRE, which is linked to by a couple of NIST topics and about cryptography and um, web uh, security testing guide by OWASP on how to test for weak encryption. And you see by just following the path, from ASVS 611, you have the link to both NIST, uh, WSTG, CWE, uh, NIC, and a whole host of other CREs. Thanks, Piers. So, so why are we doing this? Why are we aiming to make this more simple? Well, there's so many resources and you all need them when you're building software or when you're procuring software. Uh, you need to inform the testers, uh, you need to involve auditors, and they all need to know different sides of the story. Um, and this is important because software is getting more important um, and application security is getting more complex. It's not getting any easier. And we've, we, we've come a long way, right? If you look at uh, frameworks, for example, how much they take care of security for us nowadays. But still, there's a lot that remains that we need to comprehend and understand and have available as, as knowledge while we do our work. And I'm not only referring to doing this for experts to make their work easier, I'm actually mainly referring to the non-security superheroes uh, that really require security to be more simple for them to use it effectively, to use standards effectively. And uh, the shortage of security superheroes is not going away. Um, and by making things more simple and uniting these standards, that's what we basically are, are doing with this theory. And we want to reach a larger group of people who can join in on the security fund. There's one more problem that we needed to fix. It is the problem that, uh, as said, standards change. They change location, they, sh they change structure. So if you have these, this mapping uh, to the topics and higher level topics and it's working, then at some point the standard changes and it's not working anymore. The solution we came up with is that we require the links to the CRE, so the links to the topics, to be placed in the standards itself. So let's say the OWASP testing guide has a link to this specific topic in the CRE through uh, uh, an anchor, a hyperlink in HTML or whatever. It's in the source because you link to the CRE, which is actually a web page and we'll shortly demonstrate it. Um, by having that ID in the original text, we can parse it. And it's machine readable, right? So we can parse it and we know that this specific topic in the testing guide is related to this topic. And at the moment that this changes location, we just need to parse it again and the mapping will be automatically up to date. So in its most simplest form, the CRE system that we build is actually a hyperlink system, a central hyperlink system where the links to the different standards will always remain up to date because the standards actually refer themselves to the links. So the CRE, what did we do? We assembled a group of people uh, and we became part of the integration standards project at uh, OWASP. Uh, with Spiros and me uh, and Elisad as uh, co-leads and a lot of other people joining in uh, on the fund, uh, including standard makers. We had workshops with them, uh, security professionals to understand their issues. 
Then we designed the linking mechanism, basically the procedure that we took you through with these, these three uh, big problems that we needed to solve. And we created a mapping, a mapping between the ACS, the OS top 10, uh, the NIST, NIST 63 and NIST 853, uh, proactive controls, OS cheat sheets, uh, the testing guide, the CWE, and I'd like to give uh, strong kudos to the ASVS team and the SKF team who've uh, really helped and supported data and information to, to make this mapping happen. Uh, the biggest work of the mapping was to construct the topic tree, the topic tree that you need for standards to connect to. And it actually emerged as sort of a consensus from all these standards. Uh, and it's it's not a strange thing that there's a consensus because all these standards talk about the same th thing in, in the core. And we used the ISO 25010 security model from Software Improvement Group, which is also based on research of how can you make a uniform model of uh, security standards. We work with uh, OpenSSF, we work with the top 10 team. Uh, the Dutch CIP is also interested as a standard maker to see how, how they can embed it. And uh, we built the Siri application, which we're gonna demo today. And on the landing page of that website, opensiri.org, uh, we define it as follows. Siri is an interactive content linking platform for uniting security standards and guidelines. It offers easy and robust access to relevant information when designing, developing, testing, and procuring secure software. That's what Siri is. And ladies and gentlemen, now it's time for the official launch with a lack of uh, smashing uh, champ champagne bottles or confetti. We need to do it digitally. Uh, it's going to be like this. And five, four, three, two, one. Years of work. Here we go. It's launched. This is a screenshot. Spiros will uh, shortly uh, demonstrate it. So the floor is yours, man. You need to stop. Ah, thank you. Thank you very much. So we were talking with uh, Rob the other day about user journeys that we would like to present using my screen. And one of the simple topic and uh, one of the simple user journeys is let's start from a CRE. Uh, we talked about encrypting personal data at rest, and this is the relevant CRE. And as a stakeholder, uh, say a security manager in a company, you, by just viewing this page, you have access to a lot of information. You can link to the relevant ASBS. You can link to the testing guide, which you can send to your testers on how instructing them how to test for this thing. Uh, similar for uh, CWE, you can use the cheat sheets to send to relevant developers who are gonna maybe fix it. And, uh, you know, things, things like that, which is great, but it doesn't stop there because that would be just one level. If you want to protect personal data at rest, you, at some point you need cryptography and cryptography links to um, a list of NIST. But if I also click on the cryptography CRE, I get everything that is linked to cryptography. So I understand how to use cryptography in a better way. And I know that if I somehow have tested for encrypting personal data at rest, then I have tested implicitly a part of cryptography as well. And then I have all of these relations between cryptography and the rest of the tree, which is great. And also as an extra, I can learn about personal data handling, for example, right? Which is, should be somewhere down here. I'll find it. Or maybe it's not. But I learned about a lot of cryptography, like topics, which is important. For example, using secure random to generate initial authentication codes, right? Which a lot of companies fall for. But if I want to protect personal data, 
this is something that I might have to do. And in one little uh, CRE, I get links to both OASBS for my con to all of OASBS for my controls, CWE for a lot more extended information, and then cheat it on how to maybe protect about it, uh, protect against it, and make it right. And that kind of makes sense. Also, as an extra, this is not just this. This is not just starting from a CRE. Perhaps I want to start from a logical topic. So I can search for session. Give me everything that there is to know about session handling. And here's a ton of CREs on session management and session handling. For example, terminate session after lockout, right? And here's all the related standards, uh, concurrent session control from NIST. Uh, testing guide session 06, uh, relevant seat seats. And just by typing in a topic, a logical topic, almost like a meta metadata, I have access to all this information, which I can then disseminate to different people in my organization. But it doesn't end there. There is a final demo. You don't usually get three demos in, uh, in one talk now, do you? Say I'm a standards writer and I need to go in, like I write ASVS. If ASVS in its data classification section had a link to CRE, it could just add the hyperlink. And then by clicking on it, you go back to encrypt personal data at rest and you can easily traverse the tree as we saw earlier. all of that via simple hyperlinks. Rob, would you like to chime in? Yes. Thanks, man. No worries. Uh, if I can share my screen. Uh, sure. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Thanks for the demo. The future for Siri. We're currently working on embedding Siri links in OWASP standards. You saw a mock up of ASVS with an extra column having these Siri links. Uh, once you have those, you can quickly jump from the ASVS sources to the uh, testing guide sources or uh, CWE sources or uh, NIST sources, everything available. So if you're looking into encrypting personal data at rest, you can find everything about cryptography, but also about personal data from various resources. And you can think that, uh, for example, um, you want to have articles in there uh, as well more the guideline work that that can happen and as a user you can then specify what type of resources you find interesting to see when you are linked using the the CRE that's one of the uh, features that we're thinking about uh, also we're in a progress uh, a process of uh, aligning with standard makers and other stakeholders to uh, to connect more standards and Spiros you wanted to share something about our cool feature ideas right yeah, so the CRE application you just saw, it's a relatively simple graph database and a front end on top of it, plus significant parsing. Because we have, like, because math pretty much, like if you have a graph, you can easily find paths in it. So you can do gap analysis. If, uh, because graph structures are easy to customize and copy and keep track of, you can have personal profiles where you can have your own structure or pretty much start your own CREs for easy retrieval. You can do some uh, smart ranking by seeing how many people prefer a CRE. You can have specific URLs with selected arguments so that you can retrieve multiple standards or multiple CREs or multiple even gap analysis between different things at once. And a ton of other features that 
this kind of structure supports pretty easily. Yes, and before you start to think, what's, what's your business model? Uh, there's no business model. Uh, we built this uh, for, for the community uh, because we are the community and we benefit from it ourselves already. We are using uh, Open Siri uh, in our work, for example, for doing, uh, for doing code review. Uh, it's already useful and we like to spread the word and perhaps you like to uh, join in on spreading the word. Um, so brief summary, Siri enables alignment and cross-reference between security standards and guidelines to make it easier for standard makers, to make it easier to find and use relevant information for everybody involved in application security. As a bonus, we attain shared understanding in the market and industry on what security means. And there is a big need for that. That's my observation. And we also achieve more consistency and less gaps between standards. So the future is simple. Not yet, but we're working on it, right? Hmm. Our call to action to you is use openseries.org and spread the word about it. Use social media, show it to your friends, show it to your colleagues. And also, if you have ideas about it, provide your feedback and ideas in this repo shown here. You can contribute, there are instructions for it. And also, if you have mappings between standards, we'd like you to share them. So as said, the auto-maintaining feature of CRE is quite important. If standards link uh, to the CRE, that link will always keep on working if the link is made from the standard. But if it's not yet in the standard, we are interested in mappings. Uh, join the mailing list, project dash siri at os.org send subscribe to it and you will be kept up to date by us uh, join us perhaps join our team look at the integration standards uh, project page here and if you're a standard maker our call to action is standard makers unite and start using the siri links to other standards will never break your standard becomes instantly accessible through siri you provide your viewers access to a large range of related resources so you won't need to discuss all these topics yourself. And you can join our stakeholder group if you want to help steer the CRE direction. And with that, I'd uh, like to thank you also on behalf of Spiros. This was a blast. Back to Harold. <laughs>